everyone, welcome back to the Sensible Senke. And so today I have an unbagging video for you. Not quite unboxing. And this one is called Number Stacks. See you over at the desk. Hey everyone. So we're back at the desk again. And I have got a another unboxing. Or unbagging in this case. So this is Number Stacks. And um, I have opened it previously. Uh, and you'll see why in a moment. And that's my husband cutting some wood. We're trying to make my son a bedroom. Okay, I'm going to take out the, the larger pieces for a second. Um, and then I'm going to tip this onto the desk. So what I have here is, a, I, I love these mesh bags, I think they're great. So they haven't just given me a normal plastic wallet, they've given me one of those ones with a bit of mesh built into it. So it's pretty robust, I can't tear it, I can't rip it. Um, it's going to store fairly well in the cupboard. I personally would prefer it in a box because I think it's even easier to store a box, but it'll do, it's fine. Right, I have what look like counters and I have loads and loads of red ones and then I have some yellows and greens and blues and purples and pinks and uh, you will see why in a moment because I, I actually started sorting these out and then ran out of time doing other things. Um, but if I grab a hold of this stack here, you will see that my yellow ones have got tens on the top of them can see that okay um, and I've got some green ones with hundreds and I have some blue ones with a thousand on them I wonder if you can guess what the red ones are um, there are lots of the red ones I'm just going to shove those over there um, they have a kind of ridge to them which means that you can kind of stack them and they don't fidget too much okay if you don't stack them right, I could get quite irritated by it. It looks much neater when I stack them tidily. But then when I stack them tidily, I want to put the numbers all the same way round. And I haven't done that with that, so I'm just going to leave them like that instead. And there's a little red bag as well. I've forgotten what's in the red bag. Mmm. Ah, of course. So, in the little red bag is my little card. And the card tells me um, which stickers to stick on the smooth side of the counters. Um, you won't be able to see this on the camera. Let me just grab a counter I haven't stuck a number on. Um, you won't be able to see this, but on one side of this, there are four um, plastic nobules, nodules, lumps. Um, and on the other side, it's matte, um, but there are no lumps or anything. So this is what it means by the smooth side not the side that's got the lumps on it even though it's matte not smooth oh it made sense to me at some point pinks and purples pinks are 0 0.1 so i can start going into decimals with this and purples are 0, 0.0 oh, goodness there you go 0 0.01 and so i can definitely do pounds and pence with this and reds, I don't look like I actually numbered the reds. I think I must have given up at some point. Oh, I did. There's my reds. They're numbered with number ones. Okay, so they're all my numbered ones. I haven't numbered the whole pack. I'm going to admit to that now. Um, part of what I pulled out of that pack a moment ago is the set of stickers that comes with this. So here are those stickers. Um, and you do have to number these yourself when you get them. Um, apparently it keeps the costs down, so that's the reason why you have to number them. Right, what else have I got then? I have got a proper, you'll know what I mean by proper, um, laminated sheet. A little bit of glare on that, but not too much. Um, got a slight matte kind of focus, a scratch on it actually. Um, blank on one side, grid on the other side. Um, I'm trying to think of the company that usually sell these. I want to say PTS. I might have to find that out and pop it on the screen for you. Um, so it's, it's a blue grid. Then I can fold them. They're, they're okay. 
they're better than laminating a piece of paper but they're not as good as a rigid board um, but they're cheaper than a rigid board so that's okay um, they are also plastic they're not um, as I've said on a previous video if I spill coffee over this I don't know why I use coffee because I don't actually drink coffee but if I spill coffee on this I'm not going to see that horrible brown stain starting to seep across at some point so I have one of those I have three of these which again they're a laminated um, resource so there's a tens grid on one side and there's the tens and units column for the best way of describing it on the other side um, they feel like they've not been laminated and I can't poor manufacturer of this is thinking she's trying to destroy it but let's face it this is what kids do um I can piddle the corner I'm sitting here doing it now and I probably could peel that to pieces if I sat there for long enough let's hope that none of the children do that um it's not laminated as such it is laminate paper with the print in it or laminate card again it's I can bend it I can flex it I could probably crumple it up I'm not going to um, so not as good as having something rigid but then again not as expensive as having something rigid and we, we have to make compromises sometimes and I, I don't have a problem with that um, back to what else was in this little pack then so that they sent me a, a dry white marker I've still got my green one here actually but uh, there's a dry white marker working in there well, I'm hoping they sent it me and it's not mine. Um, I have got here now, ah, I'm going to confess to this in a moment. Actually, I'll come back to that one. In this bag, I've got some labels. So I've got my ones, my tens, my hundreds, my thousands. That's very, very difficult to read. I don't know whether you can even pick that up on the screen. Uh, my tenths and my hundredths. I try to say that one. I'm useless at saying it. Um, that dark blue one yes it goes with this I would have preferred to see that printed on a blue that matched this blue I would have been able to see that black print there I don't think you can see that on the camera and yet you can probably see that fairly easily okay so I've got those I then have Well, these could be fun um i then have some blank pieces of plastic um these are much better quality these are if they're even better quality than the ones that were in the other box i opened earlier these are solid well not solid solid they've still got some flex in them um they aren't gonna be messed about with very easily i can definitely use a dry white marker on these there she goes and writes the wrong kind of seven but hey ho um Give that a waft, give it a quick dry, wipe it off. Again, I haven't got my dust or use my thumb. Uh, yep, it wiped off okay. A little bit of ghosting on there, but that's because I'm not using a cloth. So, I've got some mini whiteboards, I suppose. Mini, mini whiteboards. Um, and then over here, I happen to know there's another pack of these. And these ones have got on them numbers. So... This is the number one and the number one has got underneath it a tens grid which is this one and it's showing that with one counter here this is how we would represent one. Um, now that is kind of sideways onto you which is correct it's the wrong way round for me um, so it's horizontal across the screen um, and it, it's got ten up in this corner so if I had one ten tens or one one hundred or one one thousand or one one tenth or one one hundredth I suppose so four is represented in this manner so we, we're obviously going da, 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 so from top to bottom if you like as we go across the board uh, so let's go find nine just to check that theory out in fact let's make nine before I do that and then just double check Ooh, they're sliming on the board aren't they Ugh. gosh I can see that being a problem so there's my nine um, so let's find nine in this stack there's the eight there's the nine have I done it correctly yes so we're going like this 
I'm spotting a pattern. Now, I think you would have to make a decision at this point which kind of um, resource you're going to use because if you've seen the other video with spot on with number we were looking at arrays, arrays with five so that the traditional domino type pattern and this is not using a traditional dominoes like pattern to actually um, create these. If we're relying on any visualisation we're going to have to make sure we choose which one we're doing. But I quite like these cards. Zero is represented by nothing on there. Oh, I've got the hiccups. Excuse me. Um, seven. I haven't even been drinking. Six. And these are repeated a couple of times, which is quite nice. So, you know, I can say to the children, OK, go and make two for me. Can you go and make nine for me? I could hold those up. I could do something with them. OK, um, this was a problem. So when the pack came, as you do, you open it up and you start messing about with things. And so I opened it up and I started unwrapping. And I almost unwrapped this. This has got around it a piece of plastic that makes it look a bit like, um, oh, I don't know what you could call them, just like one of those peel wrappers that you need to take off. So there's a, a peely bit here um, it just happens to say number stacks on it and it says one to ten on the side and I just wasn't thinking at the time and I started to go for it and as I went to do it I thought I wonder why it's marked with one to ten and I stopped and I noticed this word up here that said swap and I realized that actually this is my stack of ten so when I have taken my nine red ones that are here at the moment, Ooh, goodness me, and then I add one more, this is now a stack of 10. And I can swap that now for one of those. And I very nearly unwrapped this. I think I would have preferred this as a solid block so or even glued together um, so that I can't separate out those 10 pieces on there so it would have been a solid cylinder possibly with the 1 to 10 marked up on the side of it I think that would have really really helped I am worried about this because I think if I left this in the classroom some helpful child and that worries me anyway um but i could also use it you know I can, I can pop that stack there i don't know how many are in it so i can go oh it's the same height as the seven um so maybe i need three more there's my three you see on the screen and um, put that three on it and then double check the height i suppose um i don't know whether it's supposed to be used like that but that is how i could use it like i say i just wish that was one solid block and then it came with some little silver counters and some little gold count, well, bronze counters, um, and then two die, which go from 0 to 9. The 6 has the line underneath it to indicate it is the 6, and the 9 is the curly 9, and also has an, a, a, a line underneath it to say this way up. Um, actually, you have the even numbers on one side and the odd numbers on the other side, but we know that children don't always spot patterns, so the fact that when 9 comes up on there, they're not going to look around and see the 5 and realise it was the odd number. Um, I'm not that keen on that, but they're dice, and they will have been sourced from somewhere else. The manufacturer of this product isn't likely to have sat and made the dice themselves. Um, I do like the counters though, they're, they're a little bit different, they're, they're a different colour, we don't normally play with gold and silver counters. And that was it, that's all that's in the box. Well, apart from two pieces of paper. And these two pieces of paper I've actually printed from the website. So the first one is the things that you can do with this. So this is, uh, the product is called Number Stacks and we've got activities to do with number and place value and it tells us we've got printable pdfs that we can print off for it and we've got one two three we've got six activities there um so we've got missing numbers count forwards and backwards within and beyond 100 roll a goal read and compare numbers up to a million um we've then got loads of activities in red for addition and subtraction some of them are videos 
So beat the clock, recognise numbering bonds, number bonds to 10, that's a video. Some of them are printable PDFs, so that means it's going to be a game that we're playing. Subtracting numbers with three or more digits using column subtraction. We've got the green ones, which is multiplication and division, so doubling numbers up to 10, video. Um, halving even numbers up to 20, video. And then we've got plenty of PDFs again. We've got decimals and percentages. We've got four activities for that, which is printable PDF. And then we've got other areas of math. So we've got simple coordinates and compass directions, quarter and half turns, values of coins from a penny to a pound, adding and subtracting money with numbers up to 50, solving algebraic equations and quick revision of mixed mathematical concepts. Again, all printable PDFs. So I'm going to hop onto the computer in a few minutes time and we'll have a look at some of those resources that are available to go along with these physical manipulatives and resources. Before I do though, to show you the other piece of paper that I had in there. So I did go on and print off something from the website and I did print it half size because I was trying not to waste paper. And they have initial assessments that you can do. Here is an initial assessment for number and place value. And it says begin at key skill one, so it's this one here, and work through all the questions up to and including your child's current year group. Children should answer both question A and B in each key skill. If they're both answered incorrectly, stop the assessment and begin working through the video tutorials from this key skill. If either of them are answered incorrectly, continue, but consider whether it may be beneficial to recap the key skill using the video tutorial. Do not share the correct answers with your child. I think that's a bit obvious, but okay. They start off with reception level, obviously. I'm a little hesitant at this. So if I was working with a year six child, and does, yes, this does go up to year six. Um, if I was working with a year six child and they spotted that this says reception level on it and they knew that they couldn't do it, I think they might get a little bit upset. So I possibly would have preferred that to be coded, but it's by the by, I could always tip exit out. Read and write numbers to 10 in numerals. And I have to do what number is shown in this frame and show the number by drawing spots in a frame. So this is going to be a one-to-one -one assessment with them because I haven't got a frame. Oh, I have, there's a very faint gray frame there. That's my printing. Um, so I've got to show seven on this grid that's there. And I've got to say what number is represented here, which is nine. Um, and then I've got 11 to 12. Oh, read and write numbers 11 to 12 in numerals. And the first one it gives me is 16. Uh, hmm. I think that probably should be read and write numbers to 20 in numerals. Uh, count backwards within 20 from any given number. So count backwards to zero from this number. Well, I'm not going to get that unless I do it orally with somebody. Count backwards to zero from this number, which is 20. Uh, and it carries on. So the first five questions are reception level. If I get both of them wrong within any one level, so if I get both of these wrong, order and compare numbers to 20 using the language more and fewer, it is telling me that I need to therefore go and find the activity that matches that. So uh, NPV5, order and compare numbers. I'll find that there. It's probably on the website somewhere. I'll go and have a look in a moment. Um, and I need to go and do the video or the activity or the PDF or whatever it is that's from there. Okay. Um, it goes up. So bottom end of that page, I've got year one here. There's four questions. Got year two. What's that? Two questions for year two. Uh, three questions for year three, one for year four, two for year five, one for year six. So the year six question, MPV 18, round any number to a given degree of accuracy, round this number to the nearest 10,000, 834,670, and round this number to the nearest 100,000, 4,216,389. Yes, I'm not pretty Patel, I can read my numbers. Anyway. Um, and then I've got answers just in case I can't do maths because it's a bit warm at the moment. I haven't checked whether the answers are correct. And it does still say 11 to 12 up there for that one that says 16. I might contact James and see what's going on there. I'm sure it's an error. Um, and hopefully it's been corrected on the system since I last printed this out, just in case. But anyway, so we have physical manipulatives, things that we can move around. You know, I can pop these on here, I can do a bit of counting. 
so 10 20 30 40 50 um, I suppose I could even represent things like this so that would be 1123 I can even put my pounds and pence on it if I wanted to and to 22p or something like that so I can see how I can use these definitely um, I got a bit annoyed at sticking the stickers on like I said and I haven't done all of them I've got plenty of, of little mini whiteboards I like those I like the robustness of those um, I've got my cards that remind me of the values like that I don't like the dark blue one for the um, thousands I really do think that that could have been printed on a much brighter blue colour. Um, I love these cards. I think these, again, are great. Actually, these aren't... You can hear it. Um, these aren't as good as these are. But then again, these have had printing on them. And you wouldn't be able to put something like this through a printer. But they're good. They're if I tell you that my three-year-old has actually been playing with these for about a fortnight and you can tell because they don't stack perfectly but actually they're okay you can't, it's got no, there's no chocolate on them there's no squashed flies on them or anything else we're potty training at the moment there could be anything on these they're lasting quite well I can see these as a resource lasting really well the plastic counters will last really well I'm probably going to have a few piddlers in my class who might decide to uh, start piddling the labels off and once they do start to come off, as you know with anything, once it starts to come off and it loses its stickiness on that corner, it's very hard to stick it back down again. Um, so I suppose it depends whether the children can make that visualisation between the colours. I'm also a bit hesitant on this because these are pink and that is pale lilac to me. There isn't much of a differentiation between those two there. There is, however, a differentiation between those two. So I would stick with those and I probably wouldn't give that to a child at all anyway. Um, it probably isn't even designed to give to a child. Like this one, like I say, I will find out where it came from, but um, that's fairly robust um, and I've got those grids for working on so I'm going to hop over to the computer and we'll have a look at some of the resources that are available on there to support this pack of manipulatives see you over the computer look at the number stacks materials that are available online okay I have got a full membership um, James very kindly gave me a full membership so that I could uh, test all of this out for him. So you can see what I have access to here. Um, I have a user guide, some initial assessments, some video tutorials, a fluency question generator, and then both full and basic members um, have access to the games. So the user guide has this kind of flowchart system on there. Um, that just kind of recommends the pathway of things to go through. So start with number and place value, work through the initial assessment, move on to the next category or play the games that are linked to it. Kind of makes sense. Um, and then down at the bottom here, it, it, it tells me what the five areas are that I can do with that. A bit strange, I have to kind of click backwards to go back to it, but I can live with that. So initial assessments, I've shown you one of these already. So I showed you the printable number and value one. So I've got on-screen assessments I could do instead, or I can do it as a printable assessment. Um, so if I just click here and let's have a look at this decimals and percentages on screen. Um, oh, it was PDF. I was expecting that to come up with something I could type into, but okay. Um, so, oh, okay, I can put it on a board at the front of the room because it's quite large on that PDF. Otherwise, oh my goodness, they look difficult. They're far too difficult for me to do this time of night. Um, so that's that one. And then if we have a look at the printable version, this is what the printable version looks like. Um, starting at year three, of course, because that's where that term one starts. And there's far less questions, far less, there are far fewer questions on the initial assessment for decimals and percentages. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, they're the initial assessments. If I go back another screen, I have video tutorials. 
So I could go to my number and place value videos. Maybe I'm struggling with a particular aspect. I was looking for one that's got a very short video and I can't see one. Uh, three minutes and seven seconds, counting backwards in multiples of 10 within 100, which is a year one objective. I can click play. Can enlarge that screen. And if practiced counting in multiples of 10 up to 100, we now need to practice counting backwards in multiples of 10. So for this activity, you're going to need one pack of tens counters. Both your tens frames with the header cards are shown your whiteboard and your pen. For the first activity, you can see that I've stacked my tens counters into piles of different heights. And I'm going to take my first one of these now and pop it up the top over here. And your job is to count those counters onto your tens frame and see what number we've made. So I'm going to count as I move 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and I'm going to write my number at the top of my whiteboard, so that's six tens and no ones, the number 60. Then, like we did before a few activities or a few videos ago, we're going to take one of our tens away, and I'm now left with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, so I'm not going to keep playing that. It kind of gives you some idea of how that video or one of the videos from the series works. Much crisper than my actual videos. Um, nice clear table there, unlike mine that's cluttered with everything. I'm not saying anything else. Um, so we've got some nice clear videos and they seem to take the same format each time. So a bit of consistency there as well. I can see one with the um, crocodile signs for lack of a better name to give them um up to the thousand the thousands one looks blue and not that horrible dark thing that i couldn't read um so videos for each one of them and uh additional activities as well by the looks of it Ooh, did it have one that went with that oh, let's just click there let's click an additional fluency activity oh there we go look so i've got additional activities that i can pop up i can print them out and i get an answer sheet as well um never underestimate the importance of an answer sheet whilst we might be able to do most things fairly quickly sometimes we don't always have time to find the answers there's always that opportunity to give children the chance to self-check something and these are definitely good for that because they're just looking for the red writing um but also our tas who might be delivering this kind of thing are not always confident so it's nice to give them something to work with too okay so we've got videos great Ooh, go back again and we've got videos for all of those different areas and as you can see there was quite a few of them um, a fluency question generator so click on the picture below to load the generator there are 850 questions split into year groups and categories uh, select a year group in a category and then click the next button so my son's in year five and he's been working on fractions so let's go for it well, i think he was working on fractions at least that's what the ghost was chasing on the screen earlier when he was doing something uh yep okay next question Ooh. Ooh. okay that might be my fault maybe i've clicked something i shouldn't have done convert this to an improper fraction so uh that would be 24 over 5 yes uh, i then have to click show answer 24 over 5 next one i ain't doing that <laughs> order from greatest to smallest okay uh choose the correct sign for the box so it isn't interactive in that i can't you know type in there my correct crocodile sign um or any quality sign um i can't type anything into that i can't click it i can't do anything with it it's a bit like a, a powerpoint that just lets me move from one slide to the next but just happens to show me the answer if i click that one and if i click the next question it skips it and jumps two slides ahead um that's not necessarily a bad thing however it also means that I couldn't use it as a quick assessment to find out how the child is doing because it's not going to give me any feedback at the end of it to tell me that. Um, but that's the fluency question generator. 
And then we have the games. Now, these are available to anybody. A whole range of games and the skills they will revise. So that was the sheet I showed you earlier. I'd printed two on one sheet. Um, and if I go back, let's go to number and place value. And these are the games that were available. So those six games, let's try the missing numbers PDF. So cut out the black cover up shapes attached. Player A lays a shape over the hundred square. Player B has to work out which numbers are hidden. Remove the shape to check the numbers. Every correct number scores a point. Each player has five turns. The player with the most points is the winner. For more of a challenge, try this second grid with numbers beyond a hundred. And here are your Tetris like shapes. We're going to put one on the grid. Um, I would suggest that that needs to be laminated. I would suggest that it probably needs to be blown up to a three size um, to make those rigid enough to actually play with properly. But you know, otherwise, it's a pretty good number. Could actually set that as a homework, I suppose. Let's have another look at one on there. So read and compare numbers to a million. Roll a goal. The aim of the game is to score a goal by making the higher number than your opponent. Take turns to roll a ten-sided dice. Did provide those. In one of your boxes, think carefully about where you want to put it to beat your opponent. When all boxes are complete, each player must read their number correctly out loud. Play five rounds and at the end, the person with the most goals wins. Person with the lowest number makes a goal. Their finger. Yeah, okay. Kind of. Got zeros already in there. Yeah. I can tell I wasn't enamoured by that. It had a bit of a football theme to it. I'm not into football. Um, let's have a look at decimals and percentages then. So we will go for colourful. I fancy some colouring and its fractions. Before you begin, cut out and make the attached dice. Ooh, lovely. Um, roll it and colour in the equivalent decimal, fraction or percentage of the 100 grid below. Keep going until you roll a fact you can't fit in the grid. How many empty squares did you have left? OK, I have an issue with this. If I roll a half and I colour in a half of that grid and then I roll a half again on my second roll does that mean I colour in a half of the remaining grid in other words a quarter or does it mean I colour in a half of the grid There's a bit of ambiguity in that instruction that I can see could cause quite an argument in most of the classes I've ever taught. Um, maybe it's just me being pedantic. It doesn't have a half on there anyway, so it would be all right. Hmm. OK, that was that one. Um, and then just for the fun of it, let's go and have a look at other areas of maths because we had a couple in there. Um, oh, quick revision of everything. Quick master. The questions for a quiz have been the questions for a quiz have been lost. Can you think of a question to match the answers below? Try to be imaginative with the questions. When you are done, ask an adult to work them out to see if your questions match the answers. 15:48 p.m. The time all children should go to bed. Actually, no, hold on. 15:48 and p.m. Is it me? I you know, I was always under the impression that if it said PM at the end, we don't use 24-hour time. So it should be 15.48 or it should be 3.48 PM. Maybe it's me. Um, three quarters. How much pizza mum's allowed to eat? Minus five. The temperature I would like my feet to be at the moment. Oh, no, because it hasn't got temperature at the end of it. Oh, that's a shame. Minus five. The balance in my bank account. It's got no pound sign. It can't be. Hmm. OK, 103 degrees. It hasn't got a, a, a Celsius or a Fahrenheit at the end of it, so I can't say the temperature at the moment. Um, yeah, OK. Are they prime numbers greater than 11? The first two prime numbers after 11? OK. Some fun there. I quite like the idea of that one, actually. I could put loads of numbers down there, even the numbers 1 to 10, and get somebody to make a question up for them. Um, yeah, 
right, I like it. Money Mastermind, which five coins do I think are hidden? Find a selection of coins. Okay, doesn't seem to be using the materials, so the the games part of the program do not rely on you having the number stacks kit, even though it says play don't use is in the resource in the number stacks kit. But all those ones that I've clicked so far didn't actually require me to use them. Let's just go and have a look at the multiplication division just in case there is one. Bound to prove me wrong. Or not load. Ooh. Double bubble numbers to ten. Ooh, looks like a video type game. This game is called Double Bubble. And the purpose of the game is to practice doubling all of the single digit numbers up to nine. To play the game, you're going to need two tens frames down the bottom with a stack of ten ones counters next to each one. And then you're going to need all of the cards with the ones and the zeros removed. And you're going to shuffle them up and spread them out face down into two rows of... <clears throat> okay. I didn't enlarge that, so I do apologise. I just kept it playing on the screen. Um, those are those cards that have got... The, they're the quite rigid ones, but they're not blank. They look blank on the screen. They've actually got the numbers and the grids on the other side, and they're going to turn them over and, and do something with them. Um, I've got two things to pick up on this. The first one is that the title says doubling numbers up to 10, and then the gentleman on the video says we're going to double numbers up to 9. So I'm not really sure which one I'm doing. The second problem I have with it is that music playing in the background. Because this is obviously giving a child or a parent some instructions on how to play something. And I've got that nice, okay, it's, it's quite nice music, don't get me wrong, but it is playing over the person talking. Just like that bird outside is irritating me at the moment by singing every time I speak. There it goes again. Um, that music in the background was quite off-putting because I, I started listening to that rather than listening to the instructions. Um, and I didn't actually get any further than 31 seconds. But okay, I found something that uses the resources from the, the actual pack, but it looks like most of them don't actually do that, which is great because I can set it for any child to do at home. Brilliant. Okay. If I just click on the home button just while I'm here, there is a video at the beginning, um, professionally made video. There's one there that shows you the resources in a slightly tidier pile than the one I created on my desk, which is great. Um, there's an overview of the key skills. So these are the, the key skills from years one through to, sorry, from reception through to year six that it is actually dealing with, which is great. So cross-reference on those kind of things. Now, in terms of price, there is a price on here. Um, they're not hiding it from us, which I think is great. There are two different types of kit. There is an introduction kit which has enough equipment to play the games and try some of the activities in early number of place value and addition subtraction. And there is a full resource kit and it was a full resource kit that I actually showed you. If I just click on that one there, you can see that um, the full resource kit comes with these bits down here. So we've got the dry wipe, the hundreds, the thousands, the 0.1s, the 0.01s. 80 additional ones um, and then my place value header cards so i'm paying an extra 15 pounds effectively for um another uh, 20 40 60 80 160 counters those stackable counters um and a pile of um uh, a cardboard if you like that's got those numbers print those titles printed on it and the little dry wipe boards card and a pen um a little confused again because it says £10 and £1.50 for post and packaging on that one, which is fine. Um, but if I go back a screen, you'll see it actually says £10 plus £3 postage and packaging, which I'm sure you guys could work out at some point. Um, £25 is pretty reasonable for, you know, for the materials you're getting. Um, if you consider that that's less than one pound per week for a resource that's going to certainly last more than a year, 
However, what you need to be aware of is that if you wanted access to all of those video tutorials, those PDFs that I showed you, um, and those bits and pieces, so anything above just the games, um, then you also have to have a membership. And a membership is £10 for one month and £25 for 12 months. So it seems a bit uh, brainless, I suppose, there. You're not going to um, spend £10 on one month. You're going to go for a £25 one-year licence. Um, and it does say it switches to a basic level, which means you've still got the games afterwards and you can, uh, you can have an additional period. Um, I suppose the videos... You might use them, especially if you're um, getting a TA to work with a child and the TA is not very confident, maybe. Um, the other resources, they are PDF files. So, you know, once you've printed them once, they tend to get downloaded onto your computer as you go, to be fair. Um, I, mean, I have to say, every time I click something, it downloads it onto my computer and it's in the downloads file. So I can go back and find it three weeks later. So that's a bit of a moot point really um and the games are the games at the end of the day um it does say packages are available for schools that require multiple resource kits and user accounts and you can get an individual quote for that schools are usually looked after pretty well on this kind of thing um it does say if a single membership is used on multiple devices it will result in the membership being temporarily suspended until it is unlocked i hope that doesn't include me because i've logged on to it in three different devices so far but they are all on the same ip address so i'm hoping james hasn't noticed and it was me every time james i apologize um it's just the way it works i go to whichever computer is available in our house Okay, so that's what we've got. Um, got product info up there as well. Puzzle box challenges. Um, I don't know what a puzzle box challenge is. What's a puzzle box challenge? Ooh, challenge. Ah, oh, right, okay, it's another resource that they have available. I don't know anything about that. I'm not even going there. Um, schools. So we've got schools information. Oh, we've got some prices here. Look, so a full school set, five packs, two introductory kits. 12-month 10 user membership and an email link for the parents to purchase their own kits at a discounted price that's 200 pounds plus pmp um it's worth 295 and then we've got a school starter kit which is two full kits two intro kits a 12 month five user license and an email link which is 100 pounds um with all items bought separately being 195 um I normally work with groups of six, so neither of them would actually work for me. I'd end up spending 300 quid on it. Um, would I spend £200 on that? Does every child need a full resource kit? Possibly not. Can I make some of the bits and pieces myself? Yes. So like the, the place value um, cards and the, the little grids. Um, I could probably actually get away with this one to work with a small group. If I wanted to use it with more than one group at once, I would probably need this one. I'm not sure where you would have an introductory kit and a full resource kit, but that might just be me. Multi-buyer discounts. So schools or groups looking to buy multiples. I suppose you could do that if you were doing a parents... Um, a maths evening for parents and you, you put some resources out that they can buy at cheap prices. Um, we used to do that with books, didn't we? We used to have the book clubs come in and do it. Um, that's the members login area. I'm already logged in, so it's not going to show you. Plenty of reviews on there and some contact details if you want to contact them. So I will be back on screen in a moment to give you my final overview of number stacks. Okay, so we're back at the camera again and we've had a look in that bag at number stacks and that was fun. We enjoyed it. All right, so we're going to go through those criteria and work out what our score out of 10 is. All right, this time, year groups. This is suitable for our younger children through primary school and through into secondary school. I can certainly see this being used in key stage three groups and possibly even with some of our weaker students in key stage four. So this is my first ever two out of two mark that I'm giving for that one. The next one is the factor of is this suitable for whole class or just for intervention groups? Now, I think the creator of this, James, would argue with me that it's suitable for a whole class resource. However, 
I factor into this the fact that a school probably wouldn't buy it for a whole class and therefore I'm saying it's only really suitable as an intervention resource possibly with small groups probably one to one or one to two um, so I'm going to give it one out of two for that one engagement okay if you haven't seen the video on spot on with number there's a link somewhere on the screen and you'll know that I talked in there about how students expect instant feedback now and unfortunately with manipulatives maths resources they don't always get that there's a little bit of self-checking involved in the number stacks product so we've got those red answers on the answer sheets that they can go and check with those we've got that stack that white stack so we can check how many numbers are actually in there but there isn't really that feedback and positivity that goes with putting an online resource on that instantly says yes you got this right or oops did that wrong let's try again um so i'm only going to give it one out of two for that Again, I'm sure people will argue with me, but I do think about the students that we're working with and I know what they need. All right, value for money, longevity and quality. It's a reasonably good product. So you saw me tapping the cards on the table. Those mini whiteboards were really robust. They're going to last a while. Spill the coffee on them. We're not going to get brown stains creeping across the paper. Provided me with a whiteboard pen. Always grateful for those because we can never find them, can we? And the counters were quite sweet. They were a different colour. The, the number stack blocks themselves those plastic things they were great they were okay they stacked well you saw me struggling to tower them up because i was hot and sweaty and getting frustrated um but that's just me then again some of our students can be a bit like that sometimes but they do stack and stop them falling over whereas if i stacked up a normal um stack of 10 coins or something they can jiggle and fall um so that was good what I didn't like was sticking those stickers on and I can see that those stickers would peel off over time a bit like sticky tape it comes loose under one edge and then you get the temptation to start piddling at it and then it gets dry and then it doesn't stick down and then yeah we know where that one's going so although I think they're good and I can see why it's been done that way I wasn't entirely satisfied with it so I'm going to go for a one out of two on that one as well, I'm afraid. And my final category was the accreditation and recognition. So this one is about, is this a product that is um, recognised by the EEF or the DFA, or is it something that has got a strong evidence-based research background to it? And unfortunately, this is a product that doesn't have those. It it's not in the EEF, I've not seen it elsewhere, I know about the website, I know, I know the Twitter account, um, it's something that's going around by word of mouth but it's not really being featured anywhere and I can't find any evidence-based research and if I can't find it with you know 15 minutes of a Google search the chances are that it's not, um, either it doesn't have an evidence-based research or that that research is so small that it's not filling up my first 50 pages of a google search um so unfortunately on this one i have to give it zero out of two which again as a first i've not done that one before either so in total we ended up with five out of ten which just like our other one which was also five out of ten sounds awful but actually isn't that bad when you consider this is a fairly new product on the market and you know with a few of those things in place over the years as time goes by i reckon it's probably going to get a higher score over the next couple of years take care guys <laughs>